that gives a whole new meaning to the uh, to getting a cockadoo. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, I I don't know. <laughs> Okay. But yeah, I was uh, watching back on, on YouTube the other day about this one uh, cockatoo. It was actually so intelligent. It was sitting there, right? Here's this dumb dog, and there's a bag <laughs> of treats, right? And the bird just like, you know, okay, bark, <laughs> bark. And and the dog would bark, and it would drop, it, uh, you know, a treat in the dog's mouth. And it was, you know, was getting the dog to do tricks. That's pretty good. You know, crows can talk, too. A lot of people don't know that, but they can talk, and and, uh, they like to steal things. Like, they'll come near your window if your window's open and take your ring or something. (laughs) you got to watch watch out, because, you know, we're a mini farm in the compound where I'm at. Years and years ago, you know, this is probably back about 16 years ago, one of my kids shot a crow with a, a BB gun. And, you know, we only had a couple crows hanging around at that point. And then one day, like about a day afterwards, there was like hundreds of crows all over my cedar trees. And you'd go outside and they would see you and then they would kind of like squawk and do their (laughs) screaming at you. And that went on for about a week of intimidation because we killed uh, or one of my kids killed one of the crows. And it was, you know, seen by other crows when he did it. They're very revengeful. That that's spooky right there. I got to tell you, that's like a flashback of the old movie, that Alfred Hitchcock movie, The Birds. Yeah. Well, maybe that's why that movie was made because of the birds. Well, you know what? Some people say if you see a, I see a green flash in the sky, it must mean UFOs are in the area. Really? That's what it says on the news. I've never heard that before. I've heard of, heard of you know people describing green or blue lights on UFOs, but I never heard about the green flash. That's a new one. And if you see a mountain, you know, and you know a snow on it, you know a big mountain, and you see, you know, like the Chinese old hats they used to wear, the how you know the, the shape of them. Mm-hmm. If you see clouds yeah. that look like that on the top of the mountain, that is not normal. Again, usually associated with UFOs. Aren't those called lenticular clouds, yes. I believe? They, yes. look, they look like UFOs. Yeah. Yeah. But it usually is associated with UFO sightings in the area. Yeah. They, some of them clouds, I got to tell you, a lot of people, um, I could see how a lot of people could mistake uh, some of them clouds for UFOs, no doubt. And in Denmark, it was so cloudy and dark here last month that uh, they people thought at first it was a major storm coming in, but what it was is literally hundreds of thousands of birds darkening the sky. Oh, you know, I've seen a story uh, just a few days ago, but and somewhere in Texas, where thousands and thousands of blackbirds were all, it was like at nighttime, but it was kind of bright out at night, and they were all over the road and flying all over, and some were dying. It was bizarre. It was a bizarre scene, too. I've seen a picture of it. No, and you know, because the weather cycles have gone so crazy, you know, some of the, at least this past year, some of the deserts really kind of blossom with flowers and everything because it seems like, you know, the climate is changing and instead of being totally dry and high heat, you know, at night, then all of a sudden there's rainstorms and stuff. And then all of a sudden, you know, these flowers all start start appearing it's you know the earth changes is really going on and i you know again i was reading an article yesterday they said by 2050 that the ocean is going to be so polluted with plastic that no you know sea life could even live in it anymore because it'd be so much plastic out there yeah that's that's too bad you know and it's funny it, it's it's bizarre i mean I can remember snowing in October, and we got a whole week of in the 90s. I never remember a week in the 90s in October. I just don't. I don't know. There's a lot of things are going on, and, and it's weird. It's all across not just our country, worldwide. And did you hear about that huge iceberg it broke off last night? Oh, yeah, that was like so many tons. I forget how big it was. It was huge. Well, put it this way. It was about the size of some small states. That's how small it is. Right. Uh, um, hey, I got to ask you a question. Did you hear about the story about the woman and the, that um, 
had an encounter with a camel in a Louisiana truck stop. No, but is it clean enough where you can even talk about it on the show? Mm, I'll try. <laughs> uh, try anyway, to. I don't want to have to bleep you out, okay? I don't want to put my no, finger on this button. Anyway, she the, the she went and tried to chase her deaf dog in this cage, and the camel sat on her. And the only way she could get him off was to bite the camel in a certain place, and, and um, now she's getting arrested for trespassing and stuff, and they had to give the camel antibiotics on top of that. It was just a bizarre story. She shouldn't have been in there, and the camel sat on her. I guess it was like a defense mechanism for the camel, you know? It just it sits on people. Yeah, well, she didn't know. All she had to do was go, and the camel would have got up. I don't know. I've never, honestly, that's one animal I've never been around. I try to stay away from them. Yeah, well, I used to smoke camels. <laughs> oh, the, the cigarettes, goodness. camel cigarettes. I believe you. Probably the the ones without the filters too. Yeah, yeah, because that was made me more macho when I was like seventeen. <laughs> yeah, I can just see you, you probably had them rolled up in your uh, t shirt too. No, I didn't do that. No, I had them behind my ear. <laughs> hey, here's another one. Scientists have engineered a bacteria that poops magic mushrooms. Now I've heard it all. You know, there's all these things that scientists could be working on. Why are they working on something like that? Seriously. I don't know. I mean, how much money do they actually have to do that research? <laughs> hey, right. you know, Trump maybe should have stole their grant and used it for the wall. <laughs> there you go. Imagine the money they wasted, you know, come up with that, experiment with that, that time and waste the money. Could be putting it towards something more positive, for the love of God. Um, yeah, I know. And, you know, if you didn't think eruptions from volcanic eruptions weren't bad and scary enough, how about a lightning storm uh, when one uh, erupts at the same time? It creates a huge lightning storm in the area. You know, I've seen reports of that. I've actually seen some video of that. It actually does affect the weather around the isolated area, absolutely. And that can be dangerous in, in many ways. You get struck by lightning or get some ash or lava on you. It's, it's, that's, that's dangerous stuff. Yeah, if the lava doesn't get you or the gases, which are toxic from the volcano, don't get you, you could be, you know, if, if the lightning storm is, is created by the volcano, maybe one of those lightning strikes could kill you. You know, yeah, well, one of three things could kill you. Don't live near a volcano. I can tell you that one. No, I, you know, I've never understood why um, a lot of people build these nice houses and stuff close to volcanoes, you know. You know, another thing that a lot of people don't realize, the Canary Islands, that's volcanic islands. And there is a fault line on those islands, and it's, it's ready to slide off at any, it could be today, it could be 10 years from now. But when it does, when that side of that mountain slides off, it's going to create such a huge wave that it's going to hit the east coast of the United States. And, it, you know, they're talking could be up to 300-foot wave when that does. Well, that'll clean, oh. that'll clean some of the state and national parks, won't it? <laughs> yeah, to say the least, that would, be, that would be awful. I know this much. If you're on a beach and you see the water going out, like, fast, you need to, do, you need to run somewhere. That's, look, <laughs> look, okay, James, come on. You watch too many of those movies. If you're on a beach... Okay, or you're at the ocean, right? And you're clam digging, or you're looking at the babes on the beach, sunbathing, okay, <clears throat> with your binoculars, which I know some people maybe do. Okay, if all of a sudden the water starts just going out and going out and going out, and you see ships on the uh, on the uh, sand, okay, and on the rocks, you're not going to be able to run fast enough anyway. I mean, what are you going to do? Run a, maybe a half a mile, and all of a sudden this water is going to come crashing in. I've seen these movies where it comes crashing in for New York. Every, you know, it doesn't matter. You're, you're gone. You're history. The, now, here's what you do. If you're going to go down any place near sea level, you know, like under 300, 400 feet, one, get yourself a jet pack. Okay. <laughs> Or okay. if there's a news helicopter landed, you know, and they're out having coffee and donuts, run into it and try to fly the helicopter and get up over 300 feet. Don't worry about landing. OK, worry about that, you know, later. But that's about the only way you're going to survive. 
It's it's a pretty uh, grim scenario either way you look at it. Yeah, but look at all the <laughs> look at all the oysters and clams you could find when the water goes out that far. Oh yeah, I used to do some clamming, and you um, only only did it on the low tide. That's another thing. What if it comes? What if that happens when it's a high tide too, <laughs> or when there's a hurricane going on on top of that? Well, it could really all kind of uh, bad scenarios could happen there. Yeah, well, you know, in Texas, according to Joe Taylor and stuff, you know, lots of Texas was underwater, and he said that a back in ten thousand or twenty thousand years ago. You know, by digging up these bones, that's what he does. He puts bones together for museums, plus he has a small museum himself. But, you know, at one time he said a wave that had to be like four or 500 feet high came crashing in through most of, you know, of Texas and some of the surrounding states and, you know, kind of emerged it in water. Yeah, that's, you know, I've heard reports of that. I know that West Texas and I think in the Arizona up, up parts of the um, Grand Canyon that was actually a part of the uh, ocean at one time and uh, because they still they go out there actually can and find uh, megalodon teeth and stuff out in the desert oh yeah and camels you know that uh, I didn't even know it's in in Texas they there is remains of camels there's you know all kinds of weird remains t-rexes and all that stuff you know in under the ground, like six feet, three feet under the ground, under the uh, peat, uh, it's it's strange. And, it, and he said there's abundance of these, like, Campbells and all that stuff out there. So it tells you, you know, whatever happened, it happened really fast. Like we said the other night, either they were froze to death or they were barbecued or they drowned. Yeah, something happened so fast that it killed them really fast because, you know, you mentioned that, and even in Canada, some of the um, mammoths, they, they are so preserved, some of them, that they, they can still see the what they their last uh, meal was, you know what I mean? So it's like uh, there's a lot of DNA there, and I know a lot of them people still trying to clone that stuff and, and uh, mess around with that kind of stuff. But, yeah, something happened real fast, like you said, barbecue or freeze or something. Or, or yeah, they, they didn't know how to swim. And, and, you know, in Death Valley, in the desert, there's reported, and and actually a lot of reports of big, huge rocks slowly moving on their own. Yeah, I've been, you know, I have been watching that and hearing about that story for twenty some years, and, and I, they think it's because when it rains and the wind, it, it it's so slick that it actually blows those heavy rocks across. Because you can see where they've been pushed across the desert, you know, after it dries. Oh, yeah. It's freaky. And they said what happens is, you know, the desert at night gets really cold and actually ice crystals form. And they figured that's one of the ways that these big rocks kind of move. Now, you, you're talking about it might take, you know, a year to go a couple of feet. But it's eerie because you can see the trail, you know, behind the rock. And it's just like this rock looks like it's being drugged, you know, and it, it's so eerie. You know, the Indian Ocean at times grows brighter you know, then sometimes the stars above the sky in weird colors. Yeah, I did hear something about that years ago. I, I don't know if it's because of the uh, certain type of algae or what causes that, but I think that might have something to do with it. I don't know. Well, you know, another thing, have you ever seen hair ice? No, it's no, really that's a weird. It looks like <laughs> it looks like hair, but it's actually ice. And it's kind of like strange because the ice when it freezes, the water freezes at the right temperature and the right environment with the wind, it kind of makes like strands of hair. Oh, wow. I, you know what? I, that's a new one. I learned something tonight, Gary. <laughs> well, yeah, you, you can just chalk that up to Night Dreams Talk Radio. By the way, we're about <laughs> ready for news uh, here tonight, uh, you know, on the station. So we're going to be taking a break uh, shortly. Uh, after our break... I'm going to talk to you, uh, James, and all the listeners out there. What happened in the early 2000s in my life that really convinced me that paranormal things do exist? Regardless about what I saw, you know, uh, in the 70s in New Mexico, like maybe a UFO or something. I didn't actually see it, but I saw the bright lights, you know, overhead and, and lighting up the car. But in this time, I saw something. 
And I'm going to talk more about it than I ever have uh, after the, you know, the break. Oh, I can't wait. I, I love, I love. 